choosing the right bulb mode on your K1 to use with an intervalometer and why it matters. Hey, it's Tim Little. I'm a nighttime landscape artist living on the east coast of Massachusetts, and I am a Pentax K1 shooter. It almost sounds like I just introduced myself at a group session. I'm not embarrassed to have the Pentax. I'm very proud to have it. I have two of them, and I do a ton of nighttime photography with them. Last year, I did a video on how you could do star trails using just the Pentax K1's internal software. This feature is just it still blows my mind that it's built into this camera and you very rarely see it in, in any other camera from any other manufacturer. I love the fact that you can ditch cables, whether you just want to do a long exposure in bulb mode or you want to do an intervalometer or more advanced series of images. That's all built in and I love it. But there are some limitations and sometimes I would prefer to use an actual intervalometer. I'm used to using this style. I just find them easier to program because again, been doing it for a long time with multiple camera bodies. But essentially when I do my star trail runs, I try to do multiple shots in a row without any gaps in between because I don't want any gaps in my star trail. So this will come in handy also for those of you out there who are looking to do maybe time lapses with a bunch of single shots and you don't want any gaps in between. The reason I'm making this video is because I made an error that really frustrated me for a while using the bulb modes in the K1. And I thought if I've done it, somebody else has probably done it or somebody else may end up doing it. So I'm hoping that when I explain to you the two bulb options that you have in the Pentax menu system on the K1 that you will avoid that. It took me months to figure out what I was doing wrong and I have only myself to blame. It was just a matter of not understanding the setting. So we've already established that you can do a long exposure with the K1 without a shutter release cable and that is accomplished if you go in to your menu and you go in under C1 and it's option six on the K1. And here you have two options. You can do mode one or mode two. Seems pretty basic, right? So what mode one will allow you to do is what pretty much every other camera on the market allows you to do. It's the standard. By default, you hold the button down and when you're done with your shot on a long exposure, you just release the button and you're done. And that works out really well when you're using regular old bulb switches. You know, the, the easy part of the intervalometer where you've got this button here and you just lock it open and you let it ride. That's what it's good for. Mode two is where all the magic happens. That allows you to press your camera's shutter release button to start your exposure in bulb mode. And then when you're done, when you've decided it's gone on long enough, you can press that button again and it stops. So that really removes the entire need for a standard shutter release cable or a bulb switch. You're doing it all in camera. I remember the first time that I did that, I felt like I was cheating basically. So that was one less piece of hardware that I had to carry with me. Now, other manufacturers have started to catch up on that with things like touch shutter and so on. But um, having it built in has always been magic for me. You can do star trails using the built-in software on the K1. Yeah, you can always do a really long exposure. Or you can do what I do, which is multiple exposures in a row, and then you composite them later. I find there's a few benefits to that. Uh, the two main ones for me are, it's easier to remove planes that way, because in each photo, they're just in short segments, as opposed to one single photo where you're going to try to move that whole line out of there if you don't like it. And then the other thing would be, uh, you know, you've, you've been shooting for 20 minutes and your friend walks by with a flashlight, not knowing you're pointing in that direction. Well, if you do it as a composite with multiple shots, you now have multiple foregrounds from which to choose when your friend walks by. Doesn't happen much and I'm not blaming anybody, but the potential is always there. What I started to run into was I would plug in my intervalometer. I would set my star trail run. So seven exposures, three minutes each, no gaps, and then stop. I'd set that up and I'd let it go. And I'd hear that click and I'd say, okay, off we go. And I'd stand around and wait and enjoy the night sky. And then when we were done, I would go to another spot and 
do the same thing. Well, mistake number one was not reviewing the shots. Uh, that's me just being comfortable with other processes with other cameras and intervalometers. What happened was that it only got every other shot. I couldn't figure out where the error was happening. At first, I blamed this. Now, I've used a lot of these. There's so many manufacturers that make ones that look exactly like this. So once you've used one, they're easy to operate. And I went through and checked my settings more than once. And then I tried to do it again, and I had the same problem. Then I started thinking there was a problem with the K1. Maybe there's an issue with the buffering of the files. You know, I'm, I'm doing a three minute long exposure and then I'm asking it to do another shot immediately. Is it having a problem? Is it malfunctioning? I don't know. So I started to get worried that my K1 was broken or breaking or in the process of failing. I grabbed out my other K1 and I had the same problem. So I knew it wasn't necessarily a camera issue. Racked my brain, searched the internet, tried to figure out what's going on. I got another cable. Same thing. Well, it finally dawned on me just recently that maybe my issue is the bulb mode. Using an intervalometer like this will result in you missing out on half of your shots, every other shot, in bulb mode 2 on the K1. And this is because it does not operate as if you were pressing the button on the top of the camera as I thought. That was my mistake. So when you press the button to start and press the button to stop, you are providing two inputs to the camera, a start point and an end point. I think what this cable is doing instead is it's sending one very long start. And then it is assuming that when the signal is done, the camera will stop. That is not the case. Instead, the camera is waiting for the next start signal and reading that as the stop. And so then it doesn't do anything for what you think is going to be the second shot. And then it receives a signal again, and then it starts. And it just repeats that. So it's just a communication protocol that runs differently. Now, guess what? Switch over to bulb mode one, and that problem is completely solved, which makes me believe that I am right about this continuous signal while the shutter is open. So it's doing essentially what you would be doing with the button and your finger on a standard camera, just holding it down, holding it down, holding it down. Now that might just sound like something everybody should already know, but I just assumed that these were just sending out little pulse signals and they're not. I hope this helps. This sounds really remedial, but when you get to a point where you're trying to figure out a problem, especially as a photographer, and you know what I'm talking about, you will over-engineer the heck out of this problem. You will assume it's 15 other things than what it really is, and it's actually a lot more simple than you think. So I, I hope this helps somebody somewhere who might have tried to do star trailing with an intervalometer in mode two and got frustrated and just said, I'm never doing it again, and they smashed this and threw it in a drawer or threw it in the garbage. Hopefully you didn't do that with your camera. So do mode one for your star trailings with intervalometers and go back to mode two when you're just going to do your long exposures if you don't want to use a cable, and I think you'll be happy. Have you had this experience or am I the only one on the face of the planet that had this problem? Please let me know in the comments. And thanks for watching my frustration with this cable. Take care.